Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another video again with the Fly Factor 767, but today from Cancun over to Frankfurt. Also a long haul, approximately 11 hours and 20 minutes of flying time. And uh, again, we are quite heavy, just not as heavy as we were in the last flight. I'm hoping to get this uploaded uh, before Christmas, and we'll see how this how it works out. So, uh, today, uh, let's uh, get over the specifics. Today we are flying at flight level 310 with flaps 5 takeoff, no derate, so that is going to be uh, interesting. We're expecting runway 30 left because we don't have any ETC, and our winds are permitting or are uh, staying the way we predicted. Um, I don't think that's going to change. Uh, we're, we have approximately 11 hours and 34 minutes of fuel on board, a total of 122,700 pounds. Um, we're only 85 passengers today, um, so but therefore we have a lot of cargo on board today, so I believe Konda will make its fair share and make a good amount of money. Um, so we have, uh, to be ex exact, we have 50,742 pounds of pure cargo and that is almost completely full and therefore less passengers um, otherwise we'd be a bit heavy for our takeoff so with all that said we have set everything up the MCDU has been all set up except for the performance page and we are ready to start the APU just like always and I think for future videos this is how I'm always going to start I'm going to start with having it, everything complete because I'm sure not uh, most of you don't want it, don't need to see the pre-flight procedures, and so um, I'm going to start. Always start off with starting the APU, and as a as a kind of special thing for my channel, every time I turn on the seatbelt sign, the video starts, and every time I turn off the seatbelt sign, turn off the seatbelt sign, the video ends or is near to end, meaning you are released from this video and you can go. <laughs> of course you can go whenever you want but that's just a nice a touch I thought alright so uh, I hope you guys stick around and let's get right into it so we're gonna s start the APU and right off the bat seatbelt signs are on and welcome to this flight okay see the RPM rise once it says run we select our APU selector to on manually Okay, there we go. RPM is rising. We do not have ground air because look at our temperature. It is very warm outside today. 24 degrees Celsius and um, so uh, no ground air is required and we just um, we don't have to worry about our ground connections immediately. Okay, 100 RPM. Perfect. We're just going to set our timer for one minute and uh, we're going to disconnect our external power contact ground if it lets us and it's going to do everything we don't need let's close it, that door our cargo bay and our doors okay. we just have to remove our chocks and we'll do that later so we don't forget If you believe coming on, positive pressure and apply both packs. Alright, it's gonna get a little loud here. I'm gonna tune it down just a tad. Oh, it's already tuned down. And uh, alright, so we got our dispatch papers and we got our uh, load sheet. So let's go ahead and finish our FMC programming with init ref. So our gross weight, we'll just enter zero fuel weight and we got that in. Our reserves today, we're expecting. 4.4 plus 4.2, that's 8.6. We'll put 8.6 as our reserves and enter that in there. Cruise level 310. And we'll set a cost index of a low 35. No step climb. So we'll set the takeoff page. Flaps 5 today. 
no D rate, the center of gravity is 20, and select rest speeds. Okay, we're just going to enter a little bit more here. Slope stays at 0, .0. We can uh, check our winds one more time just to get a more accurate update. Turn to 3010. Okay, let's change that. And 010 at 4 knots. So let's put that in. And that is good to go. Acceleration height 3000. And next page. Okay. Set so our V speeds. And so 170 is sent. We can arm LNAV. No active route. Of course, there's no active route because I haven't checked the flight plan yet. I need to activate it. So, let's go and do that really quickly. I was supposed to do this before uh, starting the video, but we'll go and do it now. Just going through the waypoints, make sure there's nothing um, out of order. Now I am expecting um, after the uh, North Atlantic tr transition, North Atlantic track uh, uh, going up right here. That is fine. And we're going down to Frankfurt. Home base. Okay, perfect. Looks all good. We can activate it, execute, and now LNAV. Alright, initialize init ref. And that is good. So we can see LNAV is armed here. Okay, let's get rid of that. And we already did the pre-flight checklist, and the, uh, let's um, pretend we already have I for clearance and we set everything as required. And that is good. So we're going to now disconnect our trucks so, so we don't forget and uh, get rid of everything else in case we have anything extra, but we don't. We'd request pushback at this time and then set our beacon light on hydraulics, right system first, center system, and left system. Okay, fuel pumps come on as well as the center tanks. We have enough fuel in the center tanks to be able to have them on immediately. And so, with that, make sure this is set to take off ref and legs page. Trim is 5.3 units, and so we'll set that in as well. 5.3, that's approximately right there. Okay. Trim set, and we'll do the before start checklist. Fuel. 122.6 tons set, passenger signs are set, windows are locked, MCP V2, 170, heading 304, initial altitude 7,000 feet. Takeoff thrust is set and checked, EPR 1.56, takeoff speeds V1 159, VR 164, and V2 170. CDO preflight is completed, rudder and LN trim is free and zero, taxi and takeoff briefing is completed, flight the doors going to be locked now. Let's go and close it and lock it. And red anti collision light is on. Okay, that is the before start checklist. And it is quite a warm day today, so we are going to isolate a pack and that's gonna be quite interesting to see. Um, so, let's go ahead and call our pushback. Of course with Tugmaster. Start. Call. Okay. Our nose will go to the right, tail to the left. Basically facing south. Lock. I mean, it is a very nice aircraft. I really like it. They did, they did, do a good job in modeling. And that's, uh, that's at least something. <laughs> From Flight Factor, that's uh, that's very nice. Okay, release the parking brake for extra immersion. 
and let's go. So packs both come off. And we'll start number two first. Engine 2 is started. Okay. Right isolated pack come off. And set the right pack on. And we can start in engine number 1. Dim out our cabin lights. Let's have one notch in there. Uh, there's a little system, f uh, there's a little bit of a bug there. It's not reading out c the correct values. So I'll, I'll have to report that to Flight Factor. Okay. Engines have started. Let's go and stop right now. Unlock and set our parking brake just so we don't move because I already saw we were moving. Okay, so the after start procedures, anti is not required. Let's go and set packs. Pack 2 is on. If you be coming off pack 1, you come on and the next uh, isolation valve can come off. Perfect. If you can come off as well. Alright, set flaps five. Flight control check. Full down. Full back. Neutral. Check. Full left. Full right. Neutral. Check. Rudder. Full left. Alright, neutral, check. Flight control check is complete. Blank that out. Transponder can go on TARA. And we request taxi at this time, and so once we get clearance, we can go and set our lights. It is night time, so we're going to set runway turn off lights on as well. And for extra brightness, our nose gear light can come on as well. So it's just so we can see better. Okay, before taxi checklist, anti-ice is not required. Isolation, while well, isolation switches are off, recall is checked. Auto brake level RTO and ground equipment is clear. That extra level was not required, but <laughs> I said it anyways. All right, start at the first officer's clock and taxi out. Go and dim. Some of these lights, no need for them. Make it nice and cozy. And let me make sure we're going in a good direction. We don't want to miss some points. So let me just zoom in here and see what this is going to be. It's Charlie 2. Okay, that looks good. So a Charlie 2 will turn right turn into Charlie 2. And then we'll turn left onto Alpha and we'll be at 30 left. 
FMC is giving us something. Insufficient fuel. It's giving us 8.3 as a calculated fuel. Bear in mind, we will have tailwind, so this is a wrong calculation, and this is a uh, flat factor bug. I will acknowledge it, and I'll make sure everything is going smoothly, but uh, for now, that's just a bug for me. And uh, our reserves, 3.6, is not way off. Okay. So we'll have an eye on that. We'll keep an eye on that. Alright guys, so please in the chat, well, in the uh, in the comments, let me know what you guys think of uh, my new style of making videos, uh, if you guys enjoy it. I don't have any uh, editing software, otherwise I would have cut out uh, the taxi and just uh, got you guys right to the takeoff, right at the interesting part, because I don't want to bore you guys. Um, but uh, that's how flight simulation is. It's pretty much only takeoff and landings or watch, and that's why. Launch revenue is not even 100% for any YouTuber, really. Um, so, that's not the point. The point is that you guys enjoy it. I also make these videos for myself. I watch them. I watch my own videos at times too. So it's not just um, for. It's just it's for me as well. And I think that's um, what drives me to continue making videos because I do enjoy watching them once in a while and seeing what mistakes I made, what I could improve, things like that. Um, yeah. All right. So we are currently on Alpha. On the, the runway is right there, so it's not a long taxi, and we'll be um, off, off in the air in no time. So because we're almost ready for departure, we can go ahead and turn on our weather radar at this time. If I can find the switch for it, there we go. We'll keep it the tilt. Uh, we'll put it at two, positive two. Okay. Flaps are set. Departure briefing has been completed. Okay, doing a self test there, and the before takeoff checklist we can conduct right now. So takeoff briefings reviewed. Packs are auto. Uh, today is not going to be a packs off takeoff. We have enough runway apparently, and we're not as heavy. Serialized trim 5.3 units are set. Flight controls are checked. Cabin is secured. Okay. So let's pretend we got clearance to line up on the runway, and so we're going to go ahead and do that. Transponder is already set to TARA, and takeoff has been requested. We're ready to line up. We're allowed to line up. Runway turnoffs are on. We're going to turn off strobe light just before we enter the runway.
missed any runway, so we're going to get right onto it and then rotate immediately. Perfect. Parking brake set. Come on. There we go. And I thought that was that is a very nice lineup actually. Wow. Not bad. Okay. So let's say we're clear for takeoff. We can go and set the landing lights on. Taxi light can come off. And we're gonna start our clock. Because we are heavy, um, I'm gonna hold off the throttle little bit and once we apply toga I'm gonna to release the parking or release the brakes. Parking brake is off by the way. That is allowed. Okay, and toga. Okay, EPR. Eighty knots, throttle hold. You want to rotate. Positive rate gear up. Going to run the autopilot. Oh, we're just climbing up to three thousand. Just do a uh, four noise abatement departure procedure one. And then we're going to increase thrust, increase our speed. All right. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. 3220. Go and set 230. So that's one. And it flaps up. 250. Because we were very heavy, we uh, could request uh, ATC for 260, and most likely they would give it to us. And uh, so we'll go ahead and set 260, just like last time at Seattle, our last flight. And uh, so we're going to set that in. As long as we request it and don't do it ourselves, no problems there. Gear off. Okay. So oh, after takeoff checklist. Alright, so we, we're going to go and set our uh, cruising altitude now, and that means we are passing our transition level of 190, correction 195 actually. And, uh, and so, we can set our altimeters to standard. 
2992 on both sides, and 2992. So, after takeout checklist is completed. Once we uh, pass 10,000, we're going to engage VNAV. Okay, insufficient fuel, once again. Let me see uh, where they're at now. 8.4 is about the same. Alright, so let me check uh, our flight plan here. Let's see if we have headwinds or tailwinds. Our average component is a tailwind of 66 knots. So that this number will most likely increase. Now, if it be PMVG, I would believe it because it has... Um, wind data uh, from PFPX directly and uh, so an uplink and it will calculate top of crew, uh, top of descent accurately or this I don't um, because it does not take that into effect it uh, it only takes the current weather into effect this right here this reading right here and it calculates that throughout the full flight and then gets a feel from that so that's inaccurate but we're gonna expect some very large tailwinds over the ocean and so this will increase probably to around 12 to 13 tons not metric though. So, uh, because it, I mean, I would, if it be PMDG, I would acknowledge this and I would have refueled before I would have even took, uh, would have uh, departed the gate. But because this is flight factor and it does not consider winds um, and does not, and you're not able to enter any winds manually uh, for the whole flight, which by the way would take a long time. Uh, there's no point in uh, believing this too much. Plus, it's not way off by too much anyways. So that's fine. Okay, we're going to go on progress page here. Climb page here. Passing 10,000. Set VNAV. And it will go back. It will uh, set its speed. Landing lights can come off. Logo light comes off. And we're just going to check our fuel flow. Okay, that is fine. We are heavy. We have a bit of a headwind. That is perfectly fine. Again, we need to watch out for N1. It is quite high, and we just want to make sure that it doesn't exceed and uh, gets uh, too high that we could cause an engine failure, an engine flame out, or even engine fire for the worst case. Okay. And last but not least, I wish you guys a good day. And if I don't get to upload this, or if I do get to upload this, I wish you guys a Merry Christmas and hopefully a better year. Thank you guys so much, and we'll see you in the next video.